Hello, my name is Brad Huddleston. Today I'm going to show you how to use Quantum Espresso to calculate the ground state energy for a particular atom. I'll show you how and where to download Quantum Espresso, how to find a pseudopotential, how to write the input file for Quantum Espresso, and how to interpret the results. So the first thing that you'll need to do is download Quantum Espresso. If you just Google Quantum Espresso, one of the first results should be quantumespresso.org. Once you're there, go over to the download page. Then you'll see a link to the actual download page. If you're on Linux, as I am now, you can download something like this, which is the source code and can be easily compiled. If you're on Windows, you can download one of these installers. I already have Quantum Espresso installed, as I said, on my machine. Once you have Quantum Espresso, you'll need to find a pseudopotential. Back on the Quantum Espresso page, go over to the pseudopotentials tab. Here you'll see that they have nearly the whole periodic table of pseudopotentials. We're going to look at copper for this example. Now you can see here that there are many, many options that we have. Too many to sift through in this case, so let's go back. We're actually going to filter it by a special kind of potential. We're going to look at a pop potential. You see that there are fewer options, and if we click on copper again, there are fewer options, although we still have several choices. And we're actually going to choose this one. So right-click that and save it in a folder where you want to perform these calculations. You can see I already have this same potential downloaded. Once you have a pseudopotential, you'll need an input file. One place you can get an input file is on the ICME website. So the ICME website is icme.hpc.msstate.edu. If you go there, it'll take you to this page here. Then if you Google or you search in the ICME search bar for Quantum Espresso, you'll see the code page for Quantum Espresso. Here, this page is still under construction, but down under the input files, you'll see a link to the file for Quantum Espresso. And now you can right click that and save it in the same folder where you saved your pseudopotential. I'm going to rename this though because we're going to do a calculation with copper. Alright, now let's take a look at that input file and see how we need to change it for our own calculation. So you can see that there are several sections here. This first section, control, is related to some of the files that Quantum Espresso will create and need. This out directory, out dir, will tell it where to store all of the files, the output files that it creates. We're not going to need those more detailed output files, so we're going to put them in a directory called temp. This sudo dir is the directory that it will look for the pseudopotential. We have it in the same directory, so we're going to change that to just dot. This next section is system. It will tell Quantum Espresso about the lattice structure of the atoms that we're putting in here. IBROV specifies the type of lattice. 2 is a FCC lattice. You can find more information about other kinds of lattices that you can choose here in the Quantum Espresso documentation. This cell DM stands for the first lattice parameter in the FCC system. The FCC system only needs one, so this actually defines it completely. One thing to note is that this number here, the lattice parameter, is given in terms of atomic units rather than something like angstroms or nanometers. So let's change that to something realistic for copper. If we Google the lattice parameter of copper, we can look at one of these links 
and we can see copper, it's an FCC structure, and it has a lattice constant in angstroms of 3.61. So, if we convert 3.61 angstroms into atomic units, which the ratio is roughly 0.529, you can look that up as well, you'll see that we need to put in 6.824. So let's put that here. Now these next two tags, n at and n type, are related to the number of atoms, which this lattice only has one, and the number of types, which of course we only have one atom, so we only have one type. This next line, e cut WFC, is related to how accurate of simulation it's going to be. This value will be plenty accurate for our situation here. This next line is related to something called smearing. It is necessary for getting the correct answer in a lot of cases, especially with metals, but we're just going to leave these values alone for now. There's also another section that we're not going to use here that relates to convergence and some other initial electron um, settings but you can find more documentation again about that on the Khan Espresso site. After these initial sections, you'll st see a few sections that are started by all capital headings. This first one, Atomic Species, defines the material that you're going to use, in this case, copper. So first, you'll put a tag, which we're gonna use the atomic symbol for, CU, and then this is the atomic weight, which you can also find believe it's even here, maybe not. Oh, here it is, atomic weight, 63.546. So you can just put that there as well. And then this last one is the pseudopotential file that you want to use for copper. And so you'll notice if we look back at the pseudopotential we downloaded, this is the same one. So you can just copy that name and put it there. The next section is for atomic positions. Again, we only have one atom in this lattice, so we just need to put one atom in there at 0, 0, 0. This next section is for k-points. You can think of this as sort of a mesh for the frequency domain. Essentially, it acts as a way of, of how to calculate um, the energy accurately. So if you increase this density by increasing these numbers, you can increase the accuracy of the solution. Two things to note about all of this. When you're looking for a converged energy at the end, you'll want to make sure that it's converged with respect to this energy cutoff value and this k points value. All right, with that, we've finished the input file and we can actually run the calculation. So open up the terminal and browse over to this file, this folder where you have stored your input file and your pseudopotential. Now, you'll need to put in, you'll need to type the path to the executable of Klein Espresso, specifically the plane wave executable. In my case, I've added it to the path, so I only need to type this, pw.x. In Windows, that executable is called pw.exe. In either case, you'll type the executable and the path to the executable, then you'll type the argument in and give it the or top type the option in rather and give it the argument of the input file that you have created. So in our case, cu.int. Now we also want to direct this output into a file so it's easy for us to find the in the results. So we're going to direct that into a cu.out. All right. Once you hit enter, it'll start running, and it shouldn't take very long for our, si our case here. And there it is, it's done. So let's look at the results. You can just open that cu.out file, and you can see at the top, it gives a whole lot of parameters, tells you how it's running things, essentially. You can see it tells you what potential it used, and a whole bunch of other parameters about the lattice and structure. 
and it'll tell you what fate points it used, etc. Then it goes through these iterations where it's reaching a converged solution. In this case, it took seven iterations to reach a converged solution. Towards the bottom, you'll see this line that starts with an exclamation point. This is converged total energy. So here is your ground state energy in Rydberg. 210.411986000. And with that, you've calculated the ground state energy of copper in its native FCC lattice at its ground state lattice parameter. And there it is.